Hi, I'm Handicraft Kate, and I'm going to show you today how to wash fleece that is raw, otherwise known as in the grease. In the grease refers to it's literally right off the sheet. So it's filthy, it has hay in its silk, and it's chock full of lanolin, which is a very, um, I guess is what the grease is. It's very, it's actually really good for your hands. You'll have really soft hands, but it's not so good for felting because it's very greasy. So I have my tub, a giant tub, like a 50 gallon tub of just cool water and some soap. So now it depends on what you want to do with the fleece um, once you wash it, but if you're going to felt it, you want to do it gently so you don't actually end up felting it in the process of washing it. I'm planning on turning this fleece into a bat, which I will be felting, so I'm going to do it very gently. So I'm just going to start by submerging the wool gently into the water. And I have a whole bunch of this. So I'm going to just keep putting it in the water, gently submerging it. Make sure you have a good amount of soap in the water. Not only to clean the fleece, but because wool won't accept water, especially in this stage full of lanolin, without ample amounts of soap. And as you can see, this stuff is just, like for instance, I don't know if you can see this, but this is part of the sheet where they were laying on the floor, on the ground of the dirt, and there is literally dirt caked into the fibers. So it's pretty gross. Just pushing it down gently into the water. Now, I'm probably going to let this sit for a while once I get it full of all the wool <laughs> because it's going to need a bit of soaking to really loosen up the dirt and other things. I've found spiders and beetles and lots of other things in unwashed fleece so it's kind of icky, but you can get higher quality fleeces um, that have been coated, which means the sheep is constantly uh, wearing tiny, a tiny little tiny coat, I guess, and it keeps most of the mud off, it keeps most of the uh, bugs out, keeps a lot of the hay off, but this is just wool from a friend who uh, keeps sheep as pets, so uh, it was free, <laughs> and uh, it was obviously not meant keep me cut nice because it was just free fleece and I'm just gently massaging the wool, the fleece, finding little bits of uh, dirt and trying to rub them out. But I'm definitely going to need to let this sit for maybe an hour, gently massaging it. Uh, here's the last little bit. I know you can't smell it, but I let this air out outside for a good two days before I did this, and it still smells really bad. So if you're really sensitive to smell, you might want to do this in a well-ventilated area, or maybe, I don't know, nose plugs. I have no sense of smell, unlike my husband, grumpy husband, who has a fantastic sense of smell. So he's the one suffering right now, not me. <laughs> So I'm just gently, like I said, massaging the wool, pushing it down, moving it around. And as you can see, the water, which started out crystal clear, is now filthy. And what I'll have to do eventually is empty out all the water, probably outside, dump it in the woods, and refill the tub with clean water. Maybe do that two or three times before the wool is completely clean. Now, the reason I'm cleaning this wool is because I'm going to be sending it to a fiber mill. Now, a fiber mill does a lot of different things, um, including making batting, making roving, making spun yarn. But the fiber mill I'm going to be 
extending my wool to um, is the Ohio Valley fiber mill. And it's cheaper for me to send them a washed fleece for processing as opposed to a fleece that's in the grease, so to speak, because they, you know, add on an extra charge for them having to wash it. So I just saved myself a few extra dollars washing it at home before I send it out to them. Um, they'll do something else called picking, which is when you get all the hay fibers out, but I'm not capable of doing that in my home. So I will have to pay for that, but at least it will be clean, mostly, when I send it to them. Okay, so it's all submerged and it's all soaking. And I'm probably going to let it soak and just massage it like this for another few minutes. And I'll uh, meet you back here when the tub has been emptied and new water has been added and you can see the difference in color. Hi, and we're back for part two of how to wash a raw fleece. So the fleece has already been through one rinsing, and it is significantly cleaner, but still not clean enough. Um, when we emptied out the water, it looked dark as coffee. So it was very, very, very dirty. So now we have a whole new, fresh um, bucket of water, and I'm just gonna very gently push the fleece down into the water and sort of mix it around to get some more of the dirt out. Most of the dirt is out at this point. But I think this will probably be our last rinsing, depending on how dirty the water looks at the end. But I think it's gonna be a lot better this time. It was quite a process to get this huge bucket outside <laughs> and dump it. But I don't know how dirty is the water looking already. Oh yeah, it's still it's looking pretty dirty actually. Well, like I said, we will check it after this next rinsing and uh, maybe do a third one. Okay, we'll be back here for the third rinsing, maybe. Uh, or at this point, if this is our last rinsing, we'll dump out the water, lay out the fleece dry in the sun, maybe on a towel, and. Uh, It'll take about a day or two to dry completely. And once it is dry completely, we can ship it to the Ohio Valley Fiber Mill. So, we'll see.